so much overload of explanations. Explanation, but if you're just tuning in, uh, <laughs> we're still discussing running a profitable business. Helen is an experienced portfolio worker, MSME advisor, business consultant for founders, especially young entrepreneurs and women in the agri um, business ecosystem and technology enabled ventures. She has over um, 29 years post graduation work experience with major national and multinational corporates across multiple sectors. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Waze. We'll come to Helen in a bit. But um, if uh, Mo can hear me, the question that Sanzi had asked before the break, okay, but, you know, there were so many things I jotted down. We'll have yeah. more shortly, you know. Because a, lo a lot of times, you, there's something very crucial, she said. Mm -hmm. Patient capital. We truly don't have that in Africa. Do you know that there are businesses that they did not make profit until after 10 years? Like mm -hmm. she mentioned, Amazon, you know, mentioned mm -hmm. Facebook, seven years. Do we even have those patient capitals? We, we don't. don't. So if you know that this is the terrain in mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. like what you were saying about masterclass, you mm -hmm. cannot go to an American masterclass and go and come and apply. apply yeah. You know, it's the same thing with our laws. Yeah. You, can, you must tailor it to the African terrain. You know. And you know what else she said that I find uh, really interesting and mm -hmm. very helpful is the fact that if you're going to start up a business, don't just read, okay, this is how you do profit, this is how you do. No, go to the people who have failed because failure is like the best teacher. Don't no wait to jump the hurdle. There is cut rule to growing a business. Mm. You just have to delve into it. Mark Zuckerberg said the same thing. No, but thing. you have to like if brace you have yourself. An idea, if you have an idea, start something. Mm -hmm. The moment you start it, you no, get but, to but know I more about the business. But I think those people, they were... They were they were, I mean, they were blessed with first mover's advantage. Pioneer advantage. Do you understand? Pioneer advantage. Yeah, no, hold on. Let me explain. Why I'm saying, um, no, why I'm um, saying this is that now if you have an idea, you don't just jump on it. Okay. I yeah, think it is. Because there are people who have crossed if, the hurdle. Yes, learn mm. from guided, them. And that's what she said about learning about other people's failure. So me, I think right now, the strategy to run a profitable business would mm -hmm. be going with a guided, you know, exactly. guided. So Mentorship. Don't just, yeah, you know, before they'll tell you, oh, just if you just start, you know, mm -hmm. you can't really just start the strategic. now. Be very strategic. Strategic about your start. Very start. Very important. They're very important. I I otherwise, they're just going to that. pump in money and Yeah, so I think we have more back. If we have more back. Um, so about the question that Sandra asked uh, shortly before we took the break, do you mind taking that now? Okay, so basically the, 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 it, uh, the question is, does the same rules apply uh, for a different territory compared to uh, our territory in Africa, yes. particularly in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Of course the law doesn't apply, and it would be naive to think it does. You, know? <laughs> you, can't take, uh, a, you can't take culture or sometimes even religion out of business. You can't do that. I'll give an example, KFC. KFC is, thrives outside the country. Fantastic chicken recipe. For, you bring it to Nigeria. People want spice. We like pepper. You know, people who like their local food. So just to think that you know you copy and paste, uh, ignore the local rules, it's just completely it's, it's completely different. Now let me bring into uh, the business world as 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 I'm in there. So for instance, in um, in in I, I do I'm into real estate. So we build. Um, we build properties, we renovate properties, we build new ones, and so on and so forth. So I have access, apart from the fact that um, my clients, typically, they will buy my property once it's ready within a month or two because they have access to mortgages and so on and so forth. Now, the same, take the same initiative, do it in Nigeria. It's a totally different terrain. You can, you have to give people a payment plan for three, four years. Sometimes they don't even make it, they don't even meet it, and so on and so forth. What about dispute resolution? We have sorts of um, almost several tribunals that within businesses you can go into and uh, they will sort out disputes within parties. It doesn't have to go through court. And even if it goes through court, uh, the county court in UK, for instance, will probably uh, decide the case within three, four months. In Nigeria, to get a, just an injunction, you are in that court for years uh, sometimes. On the so the, the, right. the, the circumstances, you know, as we talked about access to funding, yeah. and then I mentioned patient capital, that is different. So definitely that would affect my business model. I can't do a business the same way the people that have access to it or a host of angels, investors, I can't do business the same way with madness to do that, you know? So you cannot remove the local element um, from the whole thing you know it's it's different terrain so of course if you copy and paste master uh, you go to a great business school um like harvard and any of these great business school you come to nigeria 
yes, you have the swaz, you have the, you know, the blah boom, we have the corporate awareness, you got but if you put those people statistic statistically on the street, they cannot even compete with people that work in a labor market. It's mm. different, wow. you know, it's Very different. Wow. So 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 anything you want to do, any business, when I went into when I was starting my youth business in the UK, I had to adapt to the laws, to oh, the mentality yeah. of people there. When I was doing stuff in America, I had to adapt completely. And in Nigeria, I have to adapt. Uh, that's why when a lot of, in the last, I think uh, uh, about a decade, last two decades, you've seen those, a lot of South African businesses copy and paste their model, bring it to Nigeria. You know, a lot of business, South African businesses, I'm talking, you know, both uh, the front-facing businesses, you know, franchises and, most of, and them, so on. most of them died as well. Of course yes, they were doomed they because died. it was dead on arrival. Yeah, you know? Of course they were doomed to die. Yeah. So, for instance, in Nigeria, let me give an example of strip malls. So in Nigeria, typically, strip malls work much better than the commercial mall. If you, you know, if you go to a typical mall in Nigeria, you know, people go there, they like to walk Take around. Pictures. But when they leave that mall, they, they have bought ice cream, maybe they bought popcorn, maybe they watch the movie <laughs> and they leave the mall, and they, maybe they buy something to eat. They do not go to malls to shop heavily. It's just, so basically, if you look at the malls, in the, the tenants in the malls, they just come in and out like pure water. Mm. One year, they, as soon as they, the business is over, they leave. Down. Because in Nigeria, in Nigeria what we don't have that culture. Yeah. All right, Sorry? so we have Helen with us. Um, so, yeah, I said we don't have that culture in Nigeria. So we have Helen with us. And there's a comment from the um, from the UK. I think our days are ardent watcher. He says, Good evening, ladies. If you have a business, if you have if you have a business managed successfully by your children and um, spouse, is it advisable to employ a relative slash friend seeking employment into your business or better still introduce him somewhere else? I think we'll start with that uh, for Helen. If you can hear me, Helen, you know, running a profitable business. A lot of people, when they see their business is already going, you know, in, in line with Adi's question, they start to bring relatives and all of that. I've seen one very fantastic business in Kaduna State, Chachangi Airlines. It was running successfully. It was going. And all of a sudden, when they started bringing relations and all of that, the mm. business is, 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 is gone, it's gone under, under today. So what do you have to say about that, Helen? And thank you for joining us. Hey, good evening. Thank you for having me. So whether your business is run by your family or it's run by professionals, what you need is corporate governance. Are there rules in place that guide your operations? Yeah. Are there rules in place that guide your operations? That's, what, that's where I'd like to start from. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having a family business. There's nothing wrong with having competent relatives or friends come and work with you. As long as they are competent, they fit the role, and there's some transparency in the process of employing them. Where businesses fail is lack of governance, lack of internal processes, lack of system, lack of risk management, lack of operational management, lack of operational discipline. So those are the things that make businesses fail. You can be, I always tell people not to generalize. I don't like generalizing. I always look at the context. What's the context in which the business fails? So if you want to bring your brother, does your brother know about the business or your sister or your friend? Do they know about the business? Do they have the skills? Secondly, when you bring them in, do you have a system that enables you to check them? If you don't have a system, then of course the business will fail. It would have failed whether you brought in your brothers or your, uh, or your professionals. So whenever you are bringing into your business, the first thing you have to ensure is to have governance and that is one of the major challenges with businesses in Nigeria, such that family business businesses do not transcend to the next generation because there's no governance structure in place. Absolutely. Okay. That, that, so that's my, my my question goes to Helen. Um, e business. This this question is all about e business and SMEs in the tech space. Okay. So e business or e commerce has played a huge role especially during the lockdown period. And you see people actually, there was a, a case of a lady who actually sold eggs via Twitter because there was no way she could actually go out and sell. So do you see e-business totally taking over 
uh, business transaction in terms of B2B, in terms of that's business to business or business to consumer transactions for SMEs? How, and that's one question. My second question. I, I think she should take the first okay. question first. <laughs> Time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saving me. So, any <laughs> businesses are never going to take over the entire space. The digital highway is a distribution network. So, e platforms are good for placing orders, they are good for concluding transactions, and if it's electronical, you can download. But you cannot use them for some physical activities. You can use them to initiate the transaction. You can use them for payment, but you can't use them for everything. Hmm. There will still be physical activities. There will still be interactions. So it's important for you to understand the dynamics of the digital highway. It's important for you to understand the dynamics of the digital platforms. What are they useful for? They are useful primarily for distribution. It's a distribution platform. It's a payment platform. It's an engagement platform. It's a feedback platform. So you, you need to know what part of your business you can migrate online, okay? So, so I run a consultancy. I can engage online, I can consult, but I, if I want to physically inspect your facility, I'd have to come there, I want to do my due diligence on you. I'd have to be on ground because if I want to use the digital platform, you can you can um, can manipulate it. You can read the system and show me what I need, what you want me to see. But if I come around, there are things I'll pick without you knowing, just by being there physically. Okay, so you must know what you can do online and what you cannot do online. There are limits to online engagement, so so we have to be very careful how we raise digital platforms above physical interaction. There are a lot of things that can be migrated online, no doubt. But it's important for you to know that primarily it's good for distribution, engagement, initiation, payments, but it's not all businesses that can be migrated online. Yeah. Online. All right, thank you very much, um, um, Helen, for um, th that beautiful answer. Now, uh, I have this question for you, Mo. I think I asked it earlier. And I'm asking particularly because... Um, That's for Mo. Yes, this is for Mo. A lot of people are going through this phase where I'm trying this, it's not working. Do I reinvent my brand? Do I do this? How do I um, go further? So the question is reinventing your business. How do you know it's time to reinvent and how often should you do that? Okay, so that's an important question. Uh, like I said, everyone's going through that at the moment. Um, in terms of um, reinventing yourself, sometimes we try, we start something, we try, we don't, we're not on it long enough. We're not persistent enough. We're not consistent enough. And then you take, you stop it and you start another thing and you start another thing. The truth of the matter is not necessarily what it is, is how you approach it. And as long as that's your that's your strategy and your method, you're going to just continue to reinvent yourself. You will not gain traction. That's the truth. Sometimes we just, listen, businesses take time. And whatever it is you're doing, as long as you're is it under the umbrella of entrepreneurship, it is hard. So sometimes you need to stay there long enough, try different methods, there's different ways to, to, to skin a cat. And then once you're sure that that's not what, doesn't mean you should not try other things, but ask yourself if you really tried it enough. I'll give you an example. Someone says they've been trying to lose weight for three years. They've tried everything. <laughs> Have they really tried everything, to be honest? <laughs> because we know that if you stop, if you reduce drastically what you're eating, you are bound to lose weight. You're I don't care what body shape right you are. But it, you know, the truth matter is that if you are being honest, when I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, they, say, they tell me how frustrated they are in their business, how they try so many things. And I sit down and I talk to them hard and I say, have you really tried all you can? Most of the time, it is no. They've just glossed over it, over it. They've not given it time. You know, you have to give it time. 
I, I, like I said, my business, I, I, most of the things I do, I trade on the global market. I do real estate uh, on the global market uh, in America and UK. That's the, my core business. But obviously with COVID-19, I'm in a foreclosure market. So by very nature of my market means that um, we need uh, court dates to um, the courts to be open to get a lot of um, properties go through. And they were all shut down. All right. So I was thinking myself, what could I do? I thought, okay, I have, uh, I'm a good talker. I'd like to speak and I'd like to train. Let me begin to focus on my knowledge preneur business. And when I started, of course, even though I've been speaking for a while, you know, I didn't really get that much sign up, but I had to be consistent to be persistent about it. Yeah. And then it all of a sudden took off because then I realized that, whoa, there's a whole new vacuum of uh, that I have been missing out just because I've been focused on the main business. I have not talked, focused on this, um, on speaking, on be engaging people, and training, and that right, was taking so, up. But I have to give it time. Yeah, you definitely. Know, give it time. Definitely, Mo. We we can see that we we can see that you love you love you're passionate she about the talk. But I want to say. come to Mo quickly. Um, before I come back to you, Helen. But let's make the answer short because we have like um, two minutes to wrap up. Mo, what would you say is, you know, because Helen made some statements about patient capital, right? Where people, where we don't have those kind of, we have aggressive um, investment funds for startups. That's Mo. You know? That's yeah. Mo, Mo yeah, Mo said that. I know, I'm, but I'm asking Helen the question. You are on ground in Nigeria. Where do you think the common mistakes are for startups, you know, especially for people that want to go into the business? Because you do a lot in the agri space, and I see a lot of people making so many mistakes in that space. So quickly, what would you advise someone that is trying to run a profitable agri business? Okay, uh, what I'd like to say, right, for any business you want to run, the first thing you need to start with is you have to be clear on your business model. And what is the business model? It is simply having clarity on how you are going to make money in any business you are doing. What kind of service will you deliver? How are you going to deliver it? And how will you make money? The mistake a lot of people who do business make is they start a business without understanding the business. They don't understand the dynamics of the market. They just keep trying all sorts. So first, you need to know the market you want to get into. Secondly, you can start a business without a plan, without a comprehensive plan, but you cannot grow a business without a plan. So when you start a business, whether it's a agri business or anything, if you must grow that business and stay in it, you must have a plan. You must take time to sit back and look at your business model. Okay, this is how I'm going to make money, but then how am I going to be able to do this sustainably? That's where you must have a business plan. So it's very important for people to institutionalize their businesses. There's a lot of casualty around business, and that's why most small businesses struggle forever. Yeah. So whatever business you are doing, you must sit down. Once you get traction, okay, yeah, this is a business I can run. Now sit back and have a proper plan for the business. If you don't do that, you are going to struggle. And that's why I find a lot of people struggling. See, a motivational speaker is different from a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> For you to run a business, it's a serious business. Yeah. Business is a serious business. It's a serious thing. It's not, you, and you have to be patient. You must have a plan for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you must plan for it. Yeah. There are a lot of dynamic you know, running a business that if I start talking, we won't even live here today. You have, uh, you have strategic issues to think about. You have operational issues. You have your market. You have your customers. So basically, we are okay, talking about structure. There are so many things. You cannot do that without a clear That's, plan or okay. without a clear strategy that is guiding you. So people need to know that running a business is really a very serious business. And they have to plan for it properly. All right. Thank you so much. We just have one more final question to throw in for Mo um, from EC. Okay. Um, um, Mo, wealth coaching is one of your strong points, okay? So how best can business owners run their businesses and at the same time invest their monies simultaneously? Oh, you just hit the sweet spot because I, I and I'll keep it, try to keep it short. Very short, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and that's one of the things I preach. Every business owner, you must have an income separate from the business. You see, we as you know, um, business owners, we are twofold. Some of us have um, intellectual arrogance, the fact that this is my space, I know what I'm doing, I'm great at this, and they put all their eggs in one basket. You know, don't do it. 
don't do it. You always have to, you know, know that you 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 have to tap into your vulnerable spot and invest your money. And when I'm talking about investment, I'm not necessarily telling you to invest in a private business because it, it can be they, they can head towards the same catastrophe that mm-hmm. you're heading towards. Um, invest in uh, public companies. In, invest in the stock market. I even take it a step notch higher. I say, don't just invest in your local uh, invest. Uh, um, stock exchange, invest in the global market, invest in a, a market that has been proven for centuries in companies that are great, you know, dividend paying companies. So that at the end of the day, if there's a crash in the market in your country, you can still leverage on the one in the global market. Or if there's a currency depreciation, if there's inflation, all those things that, you know, in Nigeria will suffer. You know, look at the dollar. There's been com- there's been a depreciation over the last couple of months, Crazy. you know, but those yeah. that have invested in the global yeah. space, in the global space, they're doing great, you know, um, so, and so on and so forth. So as a business, yes, you must run your business, uh, you know, intelligently and diligently, but you must always have income to invest in the global market. And that is... I think but that's me right there. Awesome. Sorry, so we have so many comments, but people are commending you by the way, Mo. They love you already, our audience, so you have to come back. <laughs> All right, then that's I'm a honesty words, you can follow me. DM yeah, me. absolutely. So someone is asking, why is Helen not live when someone from Kenya is live? Is this part of a um, Nigerian problem? Anyway, Helen has been focused <laughs> from secondary school till now, and we are proud of her. She's a great motivator to most of us. That's from A.G. Rowe Martins, Edda. Uh, that's for Helen. So Helen and uh, Mo, people are, lo- are in love with you. Um, Helen is live, so whenever we have this, um, the issues with the video calls, we just switch to phone so we don't get distracted. So right. final thoughts, ladies. Um, I particularly like uh, what, what stood out for me is what Mo said about um, um, learning from people who have walked the path. Just make your journey easier. And for Helen, the part where she said about, because sometimes we feel guilty for not employing our families and all that, but if you're going to employ them, make, make sure, sure they, they are, competent. are competent and they can manage your business. Otherwise, please take emotions out. Yeah. Do the right thing. How about you, Isi? Quickly. What I got from that is that tech business is not is not supposed to be in one place. You still have to do your FaceTime with other mm-hmm. um, individuals or with your customers or clients. So yeah. Yeah. that's a huge one. So for three me. points stood out for me for from Mo. Um, not following the trend. I wrote it down. Mm-hmm. What do you have left? That is what is important at the end of the day the bottom line you know what do you have left not what you've invested not so what do you have left, left. you know and That's learning from other people's failure learning about other people's failure mm-hmm. it's very key right you know so right. we are we we know that businesses are the future entrepreneurs are the future they would it's only entrepreneurs that can mm-hmm. truly grow any economy so we must you know continue to push for it and get the right information and be strategic yes be strategic get the right important. information to those empl- right. um, to those um, um entrepreneurs out there so thank you so much helen and thank you so much mo for joining us we love you guys and we hope to see you guys very soon now please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m it's been an insightful conversation keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at way show africa one at plus tv africa as we continue to hear what you're saying now in case you missed today's quote here it is again making a product is just an activity making profit on a product is the achievement. So we'll see you live tomorrow again at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. So bye from us. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Stay safe, always. Bye.